Welcome back. You're still watching The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. The Inspector General of Police has summoned commissioners of police across the states and their AIGs, of field commanders, over national security threats. The meeting with the CPs and AIGs was scheduled to hold yesterday morning at the police headquarters, Shewu Shagari Way, Asokoro Abuja. Well, apart from that, uh, the latest and the very uh, pressing one is the fact that Nigeria's Senate yesterday uh, lamented the escalating wave of insecurity uh, that has made Nigeria uh, unattractive in their words for foreign direct investment and urged security chiefs to up their game to halt the ugly trend. Now, the Senate president also added that uh, there is nothing to show for the huge investment, the huge investment in security. Uh, Senate President Ahmed Lawan, who expressed a view at a marathon meeting with the uh, military chiefs and heads of security and intelligence agencies. I mean, a meeting held from 2 p.m. to about 7.30 p.m. last night. Um, he described the level of insecurity in the country as most frightening. That's what he said, most frightening. And this meeting came one week after um, the minority caucus of the Senate gave uh, President Buhari six weeks to address the uh, insecurity in the country or face impeachment proceedings. Lawan spoke on a day uh, bandits uh, attacked the convoy of Assistant Inspector General Police AIG in charge of Zone 12, Bauchi Audu Adamu Madaki, uh, inflicting gunshot wounds on his leg and killing his orderly, uh, injuring many escorts. The AIG, uh, incidentally, was on his way uh, to that meeting, a police st strategic meeting uh, of its commanders summoned by the IGP, as we mentioned earlier, uh, uh, Osman Al-Kali in Abuja. Uh, meanwhile, Al-Kali has ordered enhanced security at prison facilities. He's also ordered raids uh, on suspected criminal cells in response to uh, the security glitches. Uh, the Chief of Defense Staff also, uh, that's General Loki Rabo, uh, led the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Faruqi Aya, Chief of Naval Staff, Rear Admiral Awal Gambo and the Chief of Air Staff, Air Marshal Oladayo Amao, uh, to that meeting with the uh, Senate leadership. Uh, the IGP, Osman Baba Al-Kali, uh, the DG of the Department of State Services, uh, DSS, Yusuf Magaji Bichi, uh, the Commandant General of the NSCDC, the Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps, who have been become sort of a leading intelligence provider in the country these days, surprisingly. Uh, Dr. Ahmed Abubakar Audi, uh, the Director General of the National Intelligence Agency, Ahmed Rufai Abubakar, were also present at the meeting. However, the National uh, Security Bar Advisor, Major General Babagana Mongono, retired, uh, was represented at the meeting as he was said to be at the weekly Federal uh, Executive Council meeting. Um, let's look at this, this development. We have joining us uh, security consultant and analyst uh, Colonel Hassan Stan Labo. Uh, Kadel Stan Labo, thank you very much for your time. Uh, thank you. Good morning. All right. Um, uh, it, it's quite unfortunate that, um, you know, whilst the IGP was trying to do his best um, uh, to, you know, to rally his, his field commanders, his IGs, his CPs, uh, to respond to the state of security in the country today or insecurity, um, that one of them, an AIG, was ambushed on his way to Abuja for that meeting. I think it, it, it says it all, doesn't it? And one of his aides was killed. The AIG himself received a, a wound in his leg, like you heard in that intro. Uh, this paints a picture, a clear picture of what's going on in the country in the time when these uh, terrorists or bandits, you want to call it, are able to attack security agents uh, as they wish. Yeah, thank you very much. It's rather unfortunate that uh, we're not. Yeah. Whatever the case, like we have seen now, it's clear that um, the belligerent force we are in a confrontation with are busy, you know, strategizing and trying to see to what extent they can achieve all their aims and ambitions, you know, as far as. The, the, the battle within Nigeria is concerned. It calls for so much and thinking about it. All right, there is a need for us to 
do a resistance or whatever our strategy is, they resonate for us to try to be more proactive in whatever we think we're doing. Simple. Otherwise, the belligerents will continue to take us by surprise. The bottom line is we've got to take the battle to them. We cannot be waiting for them to bring it to us. All along, we have been too lackadaisical. We have shown too much of uh, docility. This is the time to wake up. More so now that they have turned their attention to Abuja. Those who are not ready to take this issue serious, thank God they are all in Abuja. So the fire is right at their, at their, at their doorstep. All right. You're talking about proactivity and taking the fight uh, to the terrorists and uh, not waiting for them to, to bring the fight to the authorities. Um, uh, the IGP uh, has ordered that uh, the, the, the police raid cells. These are cells that are uh, in different parts of Abuja, um, you know, terror cells and all that. Um, is it that they didn't know that these cells existed or they knew that these cells existed and uh, just all of a sudden waking up to their responsibility. And uh, what do you think that says? I didn't get that. Didn't get... All right. Uh, the, the IGP has ordered his uh, men to raid terror cells in different parts of, um, of Abuja uh, as a way of uh, nipping this state of insecurity in the nation's capital uh, in, the, in the bud. He's also ordered uh, you know, the prison, at, prison facilities to uh, have enhanced security from the police. You know, so, so these criminal cells, these terror cells, is it that the police may not have known that these cells existed? You know, why did they have to wait till now uh, to, to in, invade these cells and to clamp down on them? You know, uh, right. yeah. Thank you so much. That is the lackadaisical attitude I've been talking about. Are we just knowing that these cells exist? Are we just knowing that these guys are in the forest? All over, I would just see that there is an influx of unwanted persons into the Nigerian state, carrying weapons as they are sick. Meanwhile, they are headsmen, claiming to be possibly putting, uh, uh, controlling their heads while carrying Kalashnikov. Our government were not seeing all this, our security agents were not seeing all this. But we have yeah. to point fingers to citizens who want to protect themselves by getting armed as if we are not seeing those within our doorstep who are also armed. There is more to this. Hmm. The government has to tell us what they know, which we don't know. America is busy gunning down all sorts of terror criminals all over the world. Here we are taking them, begging them and bringing them to the rehabilitation center. We are not a serious person. All right, so you, you're saying there is more to this. Um, there have been some, some documentaries released uh, recent time. Uh, you look at the BBC Africa Eye documentary, The Bandits of Zamfara. And you look at the uh, the Daily Trust or the D Trust TV documentary that was released uh, a month or two ago. That, that sort of you know captured the the, the a picture of what's going on, uh, and from the picture that was painted, I mean apart from the Boko Haram, Iswap, and Saro and all that, for the conflict in Zamfara, the one that we see uh, it being called banditry, that um, uh, you have an influx of um, uh, people from a certain tribe. Um, who are in the country and across Africa, not just West, but especially West Africa, um, they're talking about the Fulanese who have come into the country, um, uh, are also uh, attacking native Fulanese who um, live in hamlets, you know, and also sort of a, a tussle between uh, the Fulanese and the houses, so killing and counter killings, and um, both groups have had to arm themselves. Uh, the Fulanese who are in the bushes with bikes and ammunition and the houses who form vigilantes to protect their villages. Um, uh, do you think some of this should, should provide uh, a, a way for this information now, a way for our security operatives to, to address at least part of the situation, if not all? 
Uh, thank you. You see, when you watch the clips of those uh, shots, you would agree with me that now. Frankly, there is what I would call uh, uh, an official collusion. Official collusion. And um, this is between elements at the top in government with this bandit. And it is unfortunate that we ordinary citizens don't seem to know what is happening. From the initial trial of not knowing where these bandits are in the forest, eventually it became clear to all of us that everybody knows. I know. You, the policeman, know. Security agents know. Government officials know. Why are we busy telling ourselves lies? With Lai Mohammed coming on air to tell us all sorts of lies. Things like that. It is unfortunate. Uh, there is so much to take from the clip here, from the uh, video shoot we are talking about. Which, as a serious government, and if only we want to take steps at seeing that this issue is well um, at a good time too. We'll be able to do a lot of investigations from there and get so much. But frankly speaking, even all that will be a stair waste of time because government knows everything that is happening. The few journalists who have had contact with these men have always come back to tell us, and even the men themselves have openly said, tell your government or call your president that you mix up with the agreement to arrive at. What agreement did you arrive at on the help of Nigeria? That Nigeria were not like this. Issue. But this is the whole thing. You see a lot of complicity. And nobody is speaking to us. Nobody is talking to the citizens. Nobody is addressing us. They have turned us all the fools. It's unfortunate. But we are not fools. We now know what is happening. And we know it will not happen. Definitely. The Nigerian Armed Forces has the capacity to deal with this mess on ground. But the lack of clear direction from the political strategic level is not allowing the military to do its job. Simple. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay, all right, all right. So, so, so you say the military has a capacity to, to do its job, uh, but um, you have uh, some complicity at the top uh, levels or echelons of government. Um, I mean, in times past in Nigeria, the military has been proven or has proven to sometimes have a mind of its own. I mean, uh, if you remember when uh, it was said that uh, the then president, civilian president, uh, Sheo Shagari, asked the then um, uh, a military officer, uh, and leader, um, Muhammad Buhari, to to stay back and not chase uh, Mithat Sine into, into Chad. Uh, the then officer Buhari uh, refused and uh, moved his troops and chased Mithat Sine to, into a neighboring Chad, you know, uh, you know against the, the wishes of the then President uh, Shagari. Uh, so what's different this time? Why does the military not have uh, a mind of its own to, to say, you know, we, we, are, we are loyal to Nigeria first, and instead of saying we are loyal to the president first, or to any, any, anybody for that matter. I'm sorry, there's so much noise in the background there. Uh, you just could be quiet, and let me hear what you're saying. All right, all right. Sincere apologies, please, uh, for the noise in the background. I, I, I'm saying that uh, you've talked about, uh, you, you've said the Nigerian army, the military, the armed forces generally, uh, has what it takes to address a situation, but you are pointing at a uh, sort of collusion uh, from the top echelons of power in this country as being behind some of these things. I'm saying that in the past, uh, the Nigerian armed forces have proven that they can have a mind of their own um, to defend and protect the territorial integrity of Nigeria uh, as their loyalty will be said to be first, or in the past was said to be seen to be, to Nigeria, not to any individual. Uh, in government. I mean, a uh, case in point was a certain uh, military officer, uh, Buhari, who uh, 
against the wishes, it's been said, uh, of uh, the then civilian president, Shio Shagari, chased uh, Mithet Sine into Chad, um, despite the president then, uh, he was said to have told him to stay back, but he, he refused. That's the story we hear. Um, so what's different uh, about the military in Nigeria, the army, the armed forces this time? Why don't they have a mind of their own? Why do why they seem more loyal to individuals in government than to the Federal Republic of Nigeria? Colonel Hassan Stanlabo, are you there, please? I'm talking to you. Yes. So, so yeah, what, what, do you, what do you say to this? Um, can the military ha move on its own to do what it needs to do? Yes, listen to me. I said under a democratic dispensation, the military is completely answerable or even subservient to political authority. The military does not act in isolation. It takes other directly, all right, from the political leader, emanating from the political strategic level. Do you get me? So this is not the time to begin to act in a radically manner. That will not be in tandem with the democratic process which we are practicing. Simple. So when you read the body language of your commander in chief, who of course in most cases is a civilian, when you read the body language of such a fellow, or when you listen to utterances coming out of his mouth, you know whether you, that directive should be taken or it should not be taken. Simple. And we are saying that the right directives and orders. Not until of late, barely days back, when the, 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 the uh, what do you call the belligerents are now at the door, their doorstep in Abuja, that they are now taking to, or trying to take you serious. And we are beginning to hear the sort of language and directions that we should hear. Otherwise, all along, we saw how to do it. How can you, for heaven's sake, be coming back to me as a commander-in-chief with prisoners of war who are terrorists? Where are you that you did not eliminate them in the forest where you met them? You are bringing them back home to create more problems for the country. Now we begin a rehabilitation process, feeding them, feeding them, medical fees for them, Accommodation? Jesus Christ. Are we fighting any school at all? We should take into cognizance the peculiarity of our national interest and address our problems with it. America is busy firing the phone terrorists. We are here romancing our own. In the name of uh, human rights or whatever, leave those goddamn rights aside. Even those who make the laws are busy breaking it in their rational interest. And you are here because of, out of some flimsy sentiment, but um, religion, ethnicity, tribalism, you are busy gathering thousands upon thousands of terrorists. Where are they, which society are you going to losing them out to eventually? After your so-called rehabilitation. Into the Nigerian society. Are we learning any lesson from Afghanistan? Our situation might be worse than that of Afghanistan, if we are not careful. We are the reporter of the armed forces has been taken over by belligerents. <laughs> All right, Colonel, um, um, uh, has, it, has have you wondered why we, you know, we've been having, uh, uh, you know, bandits or terrorists who kidnapped, uh, you know, passengers of the Kaduna bound train, you know, kept them in the bush, moved them from place to place, and I've been releasing them in batches upon the payment suspected, uh, supposedly of. Um, 
uh, tens of millions of naira in, in, in ransom, in releasing them in batches. Um, these bandits are able to release these, uh, these, these uh, captives, you know, on roads. So, for instance, the last batch were released on the, on the Kaduna Abuja Highway. That's where they picked them up. Um, these victims, are, they, they speak to the media, they speak to the press, they record videos, they share it on the internet, you know, they speak to, and they say a lot of things. How come, till now, none of the information that these freed, kidnapped victims have been sharing has been used to locate, at least, if not rescue, just basically locate and monitor these, uh, these terrorists who kidnap the train passengers, you know. Uh, I mean, it, it's strange to people. I mean, the things they say it can give you a clue. I'm sure they have information as to where these people may be. Uh, I feel really so that these guys who are not being released are probably not going through some uh, do I say uh, protesting with the military uh, arm? I expect that as they come out, we welcome them as a country. We our security agency will take them on for initial medical checkup and what have you. You know, treat them like citizens. In the course of all this. They undergo some processes in which we are able to extract some information from them. This is what is expected in an organized country where you have systems that run automatically, you know, and seamlessly. Yes. <laughs> in a situation where we are all buried in false thinking by deceiving anybody. These guys, their families have paid the ransom and rotting them out. So maybe they have their own grudge against the system and they are not ready to use some false and so on. If you were in their what would you do? That is it. Unfortunately, now like the situation is, even if a rescue operation is to be carried out, I can assure you there will be a high collateral damage. Because once you have failed to do your homework and your citizens are taking over, there is nothing more left for you to do. You either go for a rescue where you are ready to root up on the men, or you sit down and have a peaceful negotiation for their release. I think that is the option open to our government now. The way I see it. Because the enemy has so fortified itself around his uh, abductor. So that there is nothing can be done. Any attempt to bring down any of the guards around them, you see yourself Injuring some of your men. At the end, you will not be able to get one quarter of them. So you blow the web and everything. Simple. Um, uh, is it right if some people say Nigeria is, uh, is on the precipice of being a failed state? Some would say the state has already failed. Though I doubt that is the case. Um, but is it right for people to even bring up that, 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 that suggestion that Nigeria is inching towards being a failed state? I didn't get that. I didn't. Yeah. Is, do you agree with people who say Nigeria is inching ever closer to becoming a failed state? Oh, that Nigeria has become a failed state? Yeah. Well, I would say that um, with the evidence available on ground, we are tilting towards a failed state. We are too big a nation with a level of resilience that cannot really allow us to fall into a failed state. But definitely we are marching seriously, deliberately, 
to us still sit. Uh, do you feel such meetings, uh, for instance, the one held between the leadership of the National Assembly was on from 2 p.m. till 7.30 p.m. Uh, last night, uh, and the, the service chiefs, the heads of uh, the, the, the intelligence community, the police head, the NSCDC, you know, all these people, do you feel such a meeting between the National Assembly and these uh, uh, you know, security heads will yield any fruit? Whether I see any... Yeah, any result coming out of this meeting? That is all we all, we all hope for. Because all sorts of security meetings have been held. So what has been the result? We continue to talk the talk. When shall we walk the talk? This is my problem. It's like we're just speaking drama and exhibiting how much we think we know at this meeting. But in action, we see nothing. Can you count how many situations in this? Mr. President has held this coming to Are we not tired at this meeting, hearing about this situation? Personally, I'm disgusted already. Well, it's beginning to look like some uh, breakfast, lunch, dinner up there. For heaven's sake, let's see results coming out of this thing. If decisions are taken, then go out there and implement the decisions. Simple. And in the case of the house, it's unfortunate that uh, we have never been blessed with uh, a national assembly that has the people's uh, interest at heart. The national assembly is now just waking up. Because Boko Haram is at their doorstep. Already they have run away for their six weeks uh, uh, recession or whatever it is. How can you be going on a six week break where your country is on fire? Right. It's unfortunate. And you are giving the president the six, six, six weeks of uh, ultimate. Give him two weeks and remain here with him. And after two weeks, you decide whether you are sending him out of that place or we, re we negotiate with him and give him a six week, a, a six month, uh, uh, what do you call a uh, medical leave. Let him go and attend to his dentistry so that somebody else can address the problem. He can come back two weeks to hand him over. For the next government. All these are things, these are options that can be discussed with the president, with the, with the leadership of the house. He'll sit down and discuss it and propose it. Let the president take a six months leave. After six months, he comes back and hand over to the next government. Within that period of six months, All right. somebody who has taken over for him will now address the problem. Colonel Hassan Stan Labo, I want to thank you very much for your time. Because of uh, uh, time constraints, we have to keep it, uh, call it a day uh, at this point. But um, you, you've said some important things. For instance, you've questioned uh, the, the long recess, six-week recess of the National Assembly at this time when the nation is uh, in dire straits. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you very much. Uh, Colonel Hassan Stan Lambo is a security consultant and an analyst. He's been our guest on The Breakfast this morning. My name is Kofi Bartels. I return tomorrow for the ultimate edition of The Breakfast right here on Plus TV Africa. Please follow us on social media across all platforms at Plus TV Africa and, of course, on YouTube at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa uh, Lifestyle. From all of us here at our studios in Lagos, thanks for your time. Good morning.